rocking out to the Simon Garfield town. Uh, that means that we're uh, back with the City of Santa Clarita Spotlight Show. And uh, we're here to talk about all things City of Santa Clarita with our guests Janine Prado and Laura Jardine. And right now, uh, we're just in the middle of talking about the Heroin Kill Symposium that's coming up next week on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. That's correct. And uh, tell me a little bit about, it's a panel discussion, and it's really, it's going to get a lot of information out for the community. Uh, talk to me about what type of people are going to be there and what they're, the panel that is, and, and who's going to be discussing. Sure. We're going to have a uh, representative from law enforcement, our local hospital, Henry Mayo. We're going to have school administrator. We have folks from our local um drug and recovery agencies that are going to speak and a couple of youth from our drug for youth in town are going to share their experience the first year of the program to talk about what they're doing on campus each person will have a chance to talk about what we're doing and how we can support some of the families that are in crisis and uh, as far as the you you just mentioned a couple different areas and they're all obviously tied into the uh, the heroin problem that's facing communities across the nation. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the law enforcement side of it and what are they going to be discussing? Law enforcement really works on the three-pronged approach, which is enforcement, intervention, and education. And we collaborate with them on the Drug for Youth in Town program. But the law enforcement piece will talk about what they're doing and then how it ties into what we're doing is educating the community on what they can do and how we're working with young people to keep them safe and educated on the dangers of drugs. And then looking at, you you were just mentioning it's, it's an integrated approach, and then so what is the school side? What do they bring to the table? The, the school has their own programs that they do as far as their cadre program, but we also work with them on their Drug for Youth in Town program in collaboration with the Sheriff's Department as well. What's the what's the cadre program for those who don't? The cadre program is basically where a parent can sign their young person up to be um, drug tested. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I'm so, not an expert in that, but that's what would be a school function. Oh, Okay. And, and yeah, again, that's through the Heart District, but it's all a uh, part of the uh, the programs that were offered in the city. <laughs> exactly. With the school district mm -hmm. and the, the law enforcement. Exactly. Uh, and then uh, you said there was going to be a, an expert from the medical field? Yes. We have a doctor from Henry Maria Hospital. He's been on the last couple of times. He really gives you a bird's eye view of what happens in the emergency room when people come in or overdose and what that experience is for that person and their family. So kind of maybe it's pretty eye-opening. I was just going to say some horror stories. I'm yes. sure that you might have heard anything that you can... Um, every time is different. Oh, and, really? Yes, every time is different. He really, he really um, is very emotional for people in the audience when he really talks because he's seeing, he sees the, the back end, the worst part of the actual worst, a person at their worst. So. Yeah, and I've been to the, uh, I've been to those events, and there's hundreds of people there, mm -hmm. in the, in, in, and it's standing room only crowd, mm -hmm. and everybody's just silent during some of these mm -hmm. stories because it's just really powerful stuff. I mean, you're talking about what happens when somebody overdoses. Mm -hmm. I mean, it affects so many lives that you don't even, uh, you don't even think about it. Um, and anything else in the, the Heroin Kills program we can talk about? It just There's so many different aspects of it. Yes, we're also going to have um, two pres um, representatives from the Sheriff's Department. They're going to talk about, one's going to talk about the drug paraphernalia, how people use that uh, as far as hiding drugs, what he sees as a uh, working with young people and investigating those type of situations. That seems like it'd be great for parents to know. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Very much so. It'll be eye-opening. I think they'll be surprised what young people do as far as hiding drugs or just what are the, some of the signs and symptoms and looking at your young person if they're, if they're dabbling, what you might think is a a regular roll of foil, but it may mean something else. Right. And I, I was saw something like as, as commonplace as a lint roller. Yes. And it's like, what are they, you know what I mean? You, yes. There's just so many things, it seems like nowadays, that you have to look out for. If or you're a, a tennis ball. Or a tennis ball. Jeez, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot of good information there, I would think, for parents. Um, and did we cover all the panelists? Is there any way that The panelists, yes. But we also have a presentation a little bit about social media from one oh, of okay. our um, deputies at the Sheriff's Department. I think that will be very eye-opening for many folks. One of the things that, um, in talking with the deputy in, in preparing his presentation, was that some of the things they see on Facebook and what are, are tweeted out are pretty interesting related to drugs. But even if your child's not doing drugs, they're exposed to seeing that kind of stuff. So I think his presentation it, will be very brief, but it will be very eye-opening for some folks. Yeah, and one of the things that the sheriff station in our city, uh, it you see a lot of interaction with the social media, and it's a little bit ahead of the curve in that respect, as far as you know, just contacting people and having a way to, for people to feed back and and talk about um, some of the things that are going on. Um, is that is there a social media aspect to the to heroin kills program? Is that something that that's involved with the city? Um, we also we have a Facebook page okay. for heroin kills. Um, we also have a website. So it's hellrunkills.org. But we also have a Facebook page, and we know people as far as back east. Um, there's some people that are out of the country. I can't remember exactly which ones, but they are, it is growing. 
and we get requests for our wristbands and things all the time. Oh, really? So it's not just a local Facebook. People are really starting to pay attention, and we're feeding that page to keep the awareness up all over, not just here, but all over the country. And this Heroin Kills campaign, it really was fostered here, and so now it's, it's spreading through other communities? Yes. We started it here um, in Santa Clarita, but we know that it's been duplicated in Naperville, Illinois, where they have actually taken our wristbands. We've given them permission to, and we're happy to share. Right. We share this information with Simi Valley. Oh, so really? they can do their own whatever they like, but we're willing to share with anybody that we can. And that's a community that's a little bit like ours as mm-hmm. far as the, the dynamic and mm-hmm. the, where it is. Um, that's that's really interesting. And as far as um, just spreading that information, how do you do that? Do you just do you send the wristbands and some we talk, we do you met. go out there? Oh, okay. Previously this year in June, we had what we call a Tri-City Summit with Thousand Oaks, Simi Valley, and the city of Santa Cruz, right. and we all came together as a panel here in the council chambers for the city. And we shared information and talked about how each of us is dealing with the drug situation in their various communities. Some heroin, some prescription, but ideally just to share that information so we have a broader spectrum of the best practices and some of the challenges that other communities face like ourselves. And what were some of the takeaways you saw from that? Because I would imagine that while it, you know heroin obviously it's a de- deadly problem anywhere it is, there's different approaches that mm-hmm. you can take, there's different ways to look at the problem, mm-hmm. and there's different ways that it's affecting the community. Mm-hmm. It's very different. We really work on educating young people and then there's law enforcement piece and the school district does a piece of their own. Some of the other cities just, it, it was just very different. Someone worked with the DEA. Really? They worked really doing prescription drug raids. It's just very different how they looked at how they track. I, I, I couldn't give you specifics, but it was very different. But from that, there was a strategic plan of how they did it and how they were addressing. The main part of it, too, was raising awareness so people knew it existed and there are options for them and how they can be involved. I think that was definitely a common denominator amongst all of it. The, the theme being education, mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. course, as far for as... For parents um, and teens. Uh, and so the symposium's com- uh, coming up, and then there's, um, you guys also have workshops, right, like throughout the year? We have family education workshops that par- parents can see on um, in the Seasons magazine that, all, that don't necessarily just deal with drugs, but some of the other things, anxiety, stress, some of the teen pressures that they have, even for a parent, balancing out their time so they too can be a more positive influence on their young person to help them deal with just the stresses of raising a teenager. And so on the city, as part of that integrated effort, do you guys... Uh, do you meet with law enforcement? Do you meet with school officials to kind of get together on the program? We share information. We talk all the time. We work as a, a collab- collaboration. We work together. And and does that just kind of give you a greater perspective on the thing, on the issue as far as what you need to communicate or how you how you need to approach the problem? I think that we work it as one unit. Really? So as far as it, uh, we look at all perspectives of it so that we can coordinate our efforts and not duplicate right. and, w- and looking at it strategically of how we can address it from different perspectives, law enforcement, education, intervention. So you all look at different aspects of mm-hmm. the same problem, which mm-hmm. is a, probably a good well-rounded approach, I would exactly. imagine. Exactly. Uh, and then as far as we're, we're, we're going to talk about um, Defy It and the youth aspect when we get back from break, um, anything I'm missing on the Heroin Kills campaign? Because I think the symposium, it's important to mention, you know, 630 Wednesday, you really should show up if you're a parent. Or, uh, or just, teens. Yeah, exactly. Someone just getting some information, mm-hmm. right? You're looking to find out what's going on. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to come out and really hear. You'll hear firsthand from local experts. You'll be able, there'll be a question and answer session. But I think just to hear what's going on and maybe what you can do to be a part of the movement to really engage and, you know, really watch what young people are doing as far as your community and yeah and just speaking of that you know the power of of, you know getting that information from your neighbors and and as opposed to just you know hearing you know someone who maybe might not interact with on a daily basis Mm -hmm. talking to so we'll talk a little bit more about the defiant seminar when we get back this is the city spotlight show on the uh, third friday of every month we talk about all things santa clarita and this is your hometown station am 1220 khts